Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lunch Break Science. I'm Ariel Johnson from the Leakey Foundation, um, a nonprofit dedicated to supporting human evolution research and sharing discoveries. Today's episode, we'll be discussing the role of African scholars to understanding human evolution with uh, Dr. Frederick Monty. Um, before we take a bite out of this topic, we'd like to thank the Anna Gordon Getty Foundation and Camilla and George Smith, whose generous support made today's possible uh, episode possible. Um, now let's bring on our distinguished guest. He is a Leakey Foundation Baldwin Fellowship Scholar, Gordon Getty Grant recipient, and multiple research grant recipient, uh, Frederick uh, Chalomanti. Frederick, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. Frederick is the Director of Antiquities, Sites, and Monuments at the National Museums of Kenya in Nairobi and is joining us from West Kenya. Uh, Frederick's research centers on plioplasticine fossil mammals, especially rodents and shrews, and um, their importance to understanding paleo environments. This research takes him to the Lake Turkana Basin in northern Kenya, where he is one of the founders of the West Turkana Paleo Project. He is also the founder and president of the Prehistory Club, uh, which focuses on prehistory and human evolution in uh, education in Kenya. Before we hear from Frederick, though, if you are watching this episode live, please be sure to post questions or comments in the chat for Frederick, and he will be answering them live during the episode. So, you know, seriously, anytime you have a question, if you want to hear more about some aspect of, of what he's doing, please put those questions in the chat. Um, Frederick, you became the director of antiquity sites and monuments at the National Museums of Kenya um, uh, just a few months ago. Um, and the Holy Key Foundation team was so excited to hear this from you when you shared it. Um, I know I've said it before, but I just want to take this opportunity again to say congratulations. Thank you. Before we hear about your research, I really would love to hear more about this. What are your responsibilities and the scope of this role? Thank you, um, uh, uh, Johnson. Um, like you said a few minutes ago, I, I took up this position um, sometimes before uh, end of July last year. So I'm, I'm almost, almost like six months old into this new position and my new role uh, as the director for antiquities, sites and monuments at the National Museum of Kenya, uh, largely entail taking care of, uh, of all prehistoric sites, all, all historic sites, all monuments across the country, and all museums across the country. And Kenya uh, is, is extremely rich uh, with uh, prehistoric sites, historical sites, and monuments across the country. And we have over 25 museums um, that, are, that, that are scattered all over the country. Uh, so my, in this particular office, I'm, I'm in charge of all the 25 museums across the country. I'm in charge of all the monuments across the country. I'm in charge of all the sites across the country. And in fact, we have over 360 gazetted sites and monuments across the country. So this is a really, really key docket within the National Museums of Kenya. And, and I'm really, really happy to be kind of really in charge and taking care of such a key docket uh, in this country, in Kenya, and, and also as part of the National Museums of Kenya. I know it's a big responsibility. I know there are a lot of things that we that we, we have to do or have to do, but my approach is that um, I'm going to build teams that are going to work with me. Uh, I'm not going to be a, a, a solo player. I want to build teams uh, across, the, across the, the country in the museum. Museum, and I also, also intend to, to uh, invite or call upon different stakeholders uh, to work with me in this journey because I, I, I appreciate that by myself, I can't really achieve a lot. But if I work with colleagues at the National Museum of Kenya and different partners, different colleagues and different uh, stakeholders, uh, both in Kenya and also in the country, I'm pretty sure that we should be able to, to make a, a lot of progress. Uh, uh, we know that the sites, especially the prehistoric sites that I'm in charge of, those sites are the sites that, that from which we've recovered hundreds of thousands of, of fossils across the country. These sites are, are the same sites uh, from where we recovered lots of archaeological materials. Uh, so these sites are very important to all of us, um, uh, paleontologists, archaeologists, and geologists. So indeed, uh, we we are we are we are 
they are taking care of those ties and, and, and the involvement of the different stakeholders is very critical to us taking uh, great care of this rich heritage that Kenya has, that Kenya holds for the rest of the world and for humanity. Well, thank you so much for taking a time out of your, I know it's a very busy schedule to be here with us today. I'm just, I, I am just so thrilled that we get someone of your caliber on, on Lunch Break Science. Um, one of your passions is prehistory education and human evolution education in Kenya, especially inspiring young people to study science. Why is this so important? Uh, in my view, um, I'll, I'll give you a brief history about, about my interest uh, in paleontology and, and prehistory. My interest in paleontology and, and prehistory began many, many years uh, when I was a little, I would say, a little young man uh, in, the, in the rural Kenya, uh, east of Nairobi. And my dad uh, uh, worked with Mary Leakey uh, uh, those early years. And I think from that, you can, you can guess how old I am on a, on a light note. So my dad worked with Mary Leakey uh, in, in On Way Gorge, and he used to bring a lot of books uh, to me, books on, on archaeology, books uh, on, on paleontology. And, and I began to read these books. And, and, and when I was going into high school, I, I, knew, I knew that um, I would really love to be a paleontologist. I got really interested in our understanding about, about our ancestry um, uh, as a species, and also the ancestry of, of many other faunal, uh, faunal species that we see in, in our times. Uh, so when I was in high school, I, my, my interest for prehistory really, really began to grow. And, and by the time I was, I was kind of really now getting out of my high school education, I knew exactly where, where I wanted to go. And, and in, a, in a big way, um, um, my dad really helped in a big way in trying to, to kind of really develop that, that, that interest um, in prehistory and, and, and also the books that he brought to me. And I remember, in fact, those early years, uh, uh, two, I think one or two times I wrote to Mary Leakey just to express my interest and, and my love for prehistory and human evolution. But unfortunately, she didn't write, respond back, which was <laughs> fine. But yeah. at least she knew that I, I had a lot of interest and, and passion for for prehistory, but I, I got a chance to meet her uh, many years back, I mean, many years later, and, and we began to engage really. And again, I was, I was a little kid, kind of just growing, and, and really I needed all the support of different people, and Mary Leakey, and, and, and also, in fact, Richard Leakey, uh, the, the late Richard Leakey was there also to to kind of really help uh, help in the earlier part of my journey as a paleontologist. And I know, I know, I know, uh, as we speak right now, we don't have a lot of Kenyans of taken up paleontology and archaeology and prehistory, uh, which is very very sad because because I think I think uh, we need to, to see more Kenyans taking up uh, leading roles in the study of, of, of evolution. I mean human evolution, uh, and and the, and we know it's not only humans that evolved. We know other different faunal species have evolved. The elephants evolved, the rhinos evolved. Uh, so when you talk about evolution, it's not just human evolution. Uh, it's a it's a term that really uh, uh, it's it's relevant to all faunal species. In fact, not, not just all, but what also also faunal species. Yeah. So um, when I went to use uh, to South Africa for my studies, um, thanks to the Baron uh, Fellowship, I, I I I saw the need at that at that early stage. I saw the need for us to come up with a with a with a forum. Um, at, at the National Museum of Kenya, or in Kenya, uh, through which we'll begin to uh, uh, kind of really create a lot of interest among the Kenyan, the Kenyan folks, especially high school students and also university students. And that's when I founded the Prehistory Club of Kenya, uh, through which we've gone to tons and tons of schools across the country. We've gone to colleges across the country. We've, we've spoken to many, many students, many, many, especially high school students yeah. uh, across the country from, from the coastal part of the country to Northern Kenya. And, and, and really, really, I, I, I believe very strongly that uh, the future of pre research in, in Kenya in a big way, uh, it's in the hands of the Kenyan uh, people. Uh, Kenyans don't require uh, passports or visas, if you like, to go to Turkana. Our fellow colleagues uh, who come from North America and elsewhere, they, they travel a long way to, to come to Kenya. And, and if, we, if we can really, really um, um, interest many Kenyans 
uh, into taking careers in paleontology and, 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 and archaeology and human evolution, I think, I think, I think, obviously, the, the battle or the, the push that the Liki Foundation has, has, been, has pushed for a long time in having African scholars and more African students taking up careers in prehistory, I think that that particular battle, if you like, I think will be won. And and and, and through the prehistory club, uh, we've gone to many schools across the country. Uh, we've spoken to uh, to even teachers because we believe that uh, if you can if you can drive the message to one teacher, that single teacher will reach out to hundreds and hundreds of students. So we've held uh, different seminars and workshops that have brought together our teachers, that have, uh, has brought together even, even different stakeholder, uh, stakeholders in the education sector, ministers minister of education officials, uh, those people involved in, 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 in coming up with the curriculum. So in a, in a big way, I think we've, we've succeeded. Uh, and and I, can, I can say that uh, largely based on the number of uh, university students who are now, are now visiting our museum in Nairobi and our collections, and they're, and they're spending more time there. They, they want to learn much more, uh, even during during their, their free time. We, in fact, like in the last few years, we've seen a lot of students uh, wanting to visit our collections at the National Museums of Kenya in Nairobi and, and wanting to even volunteer and, and learn more about, 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 about really this unique heritage that Kenya has and holds for humanity. Yeah, so my, I'm really passionate about uh, education, public education and public Absolutely. engagements and trying to really involve as many stakeholders as possible in this and also try to also uh, educate uh, not just uh, the youth, but, but, but also the, the elderly people because yeah. these are also the same people that can also help, out, help us reach out to as many young Kenyans as possible. So to me, this is really very important and I, I think as, 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 a, as an institution, uh, we, we should really continuously push this particular agenda as much as possible. And I'd like to thank the different stakeholders who really supported us in this. And, and I remember very well the Leaky Foundation, uh, uh, sometimes back they gave me $10,000. And through that, I was able to go to many schools across the country. And, and yeah. really, this is a, 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 um, a, an initiative that all of us have a role in and, and I would like to call upon different other people to and different stakeholders to partner with us in this going forward because the, the, the war or the battle, if you like, the journey is not yet achieved. And, and I believe all of us working together and working together and, and coming up with different ideas, I think we should be able to kind of really reach out to as many Kenyans as possible and, 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 and really encourage them and educate them about, about the wonderful careers in prehistory. And the wonderful careers in 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 in, in, in kind of that are uh, different museums and, and the the rich and unique heritage that Kenya has in terms of in terms of prehistory in terms of historic uh, materials uh, fossils and archaeological remains across the many sites in Kenya, uh, we have tons and tons of sites across Kenya and, and it's 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 really important that we educate uh, all different uh, Kenyan people, uh, high school students, the youth. Uh, the elderly, because I believe very strongly that each one of us has a role, uh, yeah. not just in, in, in engaging in this particular issue, but also also in helping conserve this rich heritage for posterity. So you're very, uh, you had mentioned that your first uh, grant from the Leakey Foundation was a Baldwin Fellowship. How did receiving this grant impact your career? Indeed, uh, the, the first book, I would say that I, I was I, I think I've probably been uh, been the longest recipient of the Baden Fellowship uh, because uh, I, I received the Baden Fellowship from my undergrad um, all the way into my PhD and and I think to my knowledge I'm probably the longest recipient of the Baden Fellowship and indeed the Baden Fellowship has played or played a very big role in making the Dr. Mandy that I am uh, now as, 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 a, as a senior paleontologist, as a senior researcher. So indeed, the Barry Fellowship in, in a big way helped uh, define my future as a scholar, as a paleontologist. And, and, and I have no words to thank the Leakey Foundation uh, for this particular fellowship. And, and also on behalf of the many other Africans that, that have received the fellowship, I would really like to thank the foundation for, for extending this support to me and, and also to my fellow other African scholars across the continent 
of, of, of really benefited in a big way from the Baron Fellowship. Again, I also got the uh, aside from aside from the Baron Fellowship, I've also received a lot of support for research uh, from the Leaky Foundation, and through uh, through those funds, I've, I've been able to carry out a lot of uh, research in the Turkana Basin, uh, through which we've made some wonderful discoveries, uh, some wonderful fossils have been discovered, and some wonderful non 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 human fauna have been discovered, and in, in, indeed, in fact, uh, this has helped. As, uh, as kind of really understand, uh, to better understand uh, uh, the ancestry of different species, the ancestry of, yeah. of even, like, for example, Kanapo, alternate Kanapo, the ancestry of our earlier uh, human ancestors, uh, of Spiritical and Mesis and other, other human ancestors. And again, also even more recently, uh, when I began to work in the Kibish Formation in Northern Kenya, uh, this particular site is very, very important because uh, it dates to around 200,000 years ago. And it's very, very important to understand uh, the, the, the emergency of the of members of our own species, Homo sapiens. So through the burden, uh, through the Leaky Foundation support, uh, I've been able to carry out a lot of a lot of research in different yeah. parts of the, the Turkana Basin, uh, especially the western part of of of, of, the, of uh, Lake Turkana, where I've had uh, some wonderful, wonderful discoveries yeah. in the last uh, fifteen years or so, and more work continues to be to be uh, undertaken and I'm pretty sure that uh very soon uh you 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 learn uh, more about some of our wonderful discoveries and yeah. very soon I don't want I don't want to preempt but I, but they, they'll be making some 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 very good uh some wonderful um, um announcement hopefully keep your fingers crossed but I, I don't want to talk about what okay uh, because, yeah well, well, um, well uh, you'll have to Italy keep us posted though that. <laughs> um that? As a keep us posted on 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 the discovery. Exactly, we we'll do that, especially from the Kibish Formation uh, that yeah. dates to around two hundred uh, two hundred thousand years ago, and and I'm pretty sure that uh, very soon there will be you read in the, in the I mean the, I mean the print media and, and 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 we all kind of really celebrate those wonderful discoveries. But I, I don't want to preempt that uh, okay. right now. But uh, keep your eyes and ears open as much as possible. I will. Yeah. Um, the. Um... The Baldwin Fellowship Program of the Leakey Foundation is actually currently um, expanding to be able to fund more researchers each year. And um, we're currently um, asking for your help to make this possible. The Baldwin Program um, helps fulfill the dreams of aspiring researchers of a career in science. And um, it supports outstanding graduate students from countries with limited opportunities. And um, this year, uh, especially, the need has has far surpassed what we usually offer. So um, we've sh if you're interested in helping the Leakey Foundation and helping um, students, we've had um, we've had actually many um, past uh, Baldwin scientists on Lunch Break Science. Um, I should actually I should put together a playlist of all of our of our Baldwin's, but um, we'll be sharing a link in the chat for um, if, if you are interested in helping support this. And also if you are interested in applying, if you are looking for support, please uh, check out both of those links in the chat. And we'll also send them in a follow-up email. Um, my, uh, my next question for you is, what has been the importance of mentors, collaborators, and mentoring the next generation of scientists to you? I, th I think I mean, like I said earlier on, um, mentorship is is a is a journey that I think I think all of us should should take uh, because the future of any any research uh, discipline on or, or any research area, be it prehistory, be it uh, biological studies, be it uh, um, uh, even 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 uh, archaeology, paleontology, be it even medicine. Any other career that you that, that you can imagine that, that you can think about, there's always need for mentorship, and and I think in my view there's there's more, much more need for mentorship, especially in our in our area of re, of research, prehistory, because uh, it's a, it's a it's a topic that that um that still is still pretty young, especially yeah. in Africa, uh, we don't have many many African scholars who've taken up our uh, prehistory. Uh, research, especially especially human evolution. I mean, studying studies uh, associated with human evolution. So, in in in, I mean, my view is that 
the the, the journey we we haven't really done a lot in this and there's much more need for us to 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 kind of uh come come together all of us myself and others other people and and the Liki foundation and other different stakeholders to come together uh in in, in trying to really mentor uh more young african scholars and and and, and I, I think i i can't really do it alone we have to do it together as a team uh, uh we have to involve different stakeholders we have to uh employ different different uh techniques if i may say in doing this uh because in kenya for example uh, the, the, top, the topic of evolution is a very controversial topic. If you, if you talk about evolution um, in, in our schools, it's a, it's a topic that provokes a lot of, a lot of debate. Yeah, so I, I think if all of us were, were to come together, I think we should be able to, to really discuss this particular topic more, more openly. We, we should be able to engage even many more people uh, in doing this because because there's need for us to to do it and, and, and to work together i wish you together uh johnson i can't see you yes i was i just figured everyone would 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 like to see you more than me <laughs> i miss johnson i wish are you still with us yes i am can you see me okay yeah okay. i was saying i was saying i was saying that it's that it's a team effort i none of us can really win this alone we need to work together we need to it's very critical. We need to build the future generations. Um, uh, we we all know that we 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 won't, we won't be there for a very long time, uh, but we need to leave uh, uh, other young generations or other young scholars of scientists who or pick carried from where we we will have left. Uh, so it's an it's a it's an initiative that all of us have to play a big role. And 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 I'm personally I'm very passionate about this, and I'm doing my best to ensure. Mm -hmm. That I, I engage uh, as many young young Kenyans uh, and, and, and young people in in trying to encourage them and into mentoring them into taking up careers in paleontology and archaeology uh, and, and in general history you know, and also geology because you know we require we need to have uh, many geologists because I mean as a paleontology uh, paleontologists we have to work with geologists who who, do, who really help us in trying to understand different things in the field. We even would try to help us understand how those particular forces were formed and, and how the sites were formed. So it's, it, it has to be a team effort. And, and yeah. I know the Leakey Foundation has played a very big role in trying to really um, um, help Menda, many Kenyans. And I'm very happy to hear uh, about what you said uh, about the Baldwin Fellowship and, and how our best we can really work together in trying to encourage and to trying to identify uh, other African scholars and young young scholars who, who can apply for the Baldwin Fellowship, and I'm pretty sure that I'll be again, again uh, with you much more and going forward, and and we will we'll be working close with the Liki Foundation, and Absolutely. we work together in trying to identify uh, 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 deserving students. I mean, and also smart smart ones. I know sometimes it's not always easy to find to find good students. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a bit of luck, but I think with luck we should be able to to, to really identify some students who will do well and we will be able to carry on from where uh, from where we live because we're not going to be there for for a very long time, obviously. And and there's need for a community uh, for another generation that will come after us, uh, just like there there is us who, who came or who came after people like Frank Brown and others. So we need to really yeah. pass on the burden to, to to other people. Uh, going forward, and and the journey is not really, really uh, uh, well. We, we haven't done very well in this particular journey, but I think I think all of us working together, and I believe this particular initiative that the, the Liquid Foundation has come up with, I think it's a wonderful thing, and we, we need to really engage more African scholars, young scholars. We need to even organize uh, many meetings yeah. and and, uh, and and engage different young people across 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 the African continent, uh, because I think by so doing. We'll be able to build really on the next generation. I know in in Kenya, in Ethiopia, in other parts of Africa, there's a great need for us. Those of us who are who are, who are fairly established, we need to play a much bigger role and mentor more young people 
in countries South, like South Africa, there is even a greater need, especially among among the our black folks. Uh, I, I'm, I'm aware because I went to school at the University of Cape Town, so so I'm pretty I'm very much aware of really the situation down there. So I believe there's a great need for us to uh, as African scholars or researchers to to really work together and form some networks uh, through which we, we encourage more African uh, students to take up careers in prehistory. You know, um, so um, could, tell us a little bit about your mentor, who is uh, uh, Frank Brown, who we saw a little bit earlier. How did you become connected with him and what was the importance of his role in your um, trajectory, in your career? Uh, Frank, Frank, Frank and I, um, uh, be, before he, he passed on in 20, I think 2017, uh, uh, we had a very long history. I remember, remember my, my my when I joined the museum uh, uh, in in the late eighties. Oh my God, I was I can't imagine so long such a long time ago. In in the late eighties, um, in my first I joined the museum as a research assistant, and my my first assignment was to go to Trukana, and and I took part in the excavation of the famous Trukana boy, the Homo Homo Augusta, or if you like Homo erectus, and that was when when I met Frank Brown, and I was I was a little kid, a very skinny um, uh, those days, uh, <laughs> very pretty young. Um, and and I remember uh, when I when I met Frank, the first question Frank asked me was, he said in in in, in Kiswahili, Kijana, uh, why are you not in school? I mean, young man, why are you not in school? Then I, I I got a chance to kind of really pour my heart out to Frank, and I, I told him about my my background and and and, and my, my my passion and my desire to to really uh, further my studies and Frank uh, really was very kind and, and, and they told me you know what I'll help you through school uh, so Frank indeed was my mentor I remember uh, very well in fact uh, before the Licky before the Licky Foundation took up uh, I mean offered me the Baldwin Fellowship I remember very well I think Frank Brown. Uh, gave his own ten thousand dollars and asked the Leakey Foundation to take up the rest of my studies, and indeed they generously did that, and to which I truly and deeply appreciate. Yeah, so uh, Frank Brown has played a key role in mentoring not just me but but also other African scholars, uh, uh, people like Dr. Patrick uh, Gadogo uh, was mentored by, by Frank Brown, and is one of one of one of Kenya's uh, top geologists. In fact. Uh, he understands the Trukana Basin, the geology of the Trukana Basin, quite quite well. And in fact, now, now aside from aside from uh, uh, Craig Fable, uh, who is based at the University of Radigas in New Jersey, I think aside from Craig, I think Patrick is the second person. I mean, the only the only other uh, geologist, to my knowledge, who really really understand the Trukana Basin pretty pretty well. Yeah. yeah, so Patrick was also mentored by Frank Brown. And, and so it's it's really it, it kind of really underscores the need for more for more for more of our partners, for more yeah. of our colleagues uh to get involved in mentoring more Kenyan more Kenyans and really Frank Brown has played a, or, or played a, a key role and it, it was so sad that he, he passed on and, and when it when that happened, obviously it, it hit us very hard and we are hoping we we're hoping that you you live for, for a longer time. Uh, to see us succeed in, in our research because it mentored us uh, and, and, also to, and also to help in mentoring more Kenyans. But yeah, we absolutely. truly appreciate uh, really the role it played in our lives and, 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 and also working very closely with the Liquid Foundation. Uh, we, we appreciate the big role uh, that Frank and the Liquid Foundation working together has played in, 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 in mentoring uh, Kenyans uh, and also Africans across, across, across the, the continent. Um. Before I um, uh, before I ask you any more questions, we actually have a really good question from our audience, um, from Brandon. Um, let's see here. Uh, Brandon asks, "Are there any challenges you face when teaching human evolution to school children?" That's a very good question. That's a wonderful question. Um, like I said earlier on, uh, a, a large part of the Kenyan um, uh, society, if you like, uh, is it's it's very religious. Very religious, religious, and and uh, um, we face a lot of challenges when we when we teach, especially when you go to some of the schools that are very religious. 
uh, we face a lot of a lot of challenges, and 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 but we engage the students really quite well. We we give them all kinds of examples. Uh, we 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 tell them that when you when you talk about evolution, we don't just refer to human evolution because we know other animals also evolved. So evolution doesn't doesn't just refer to humans. Uh, it refers to it's, it's a general term that it refers to evolution of biological species. We are we are we are one species among tons and tons, I mean, thousands of other species. Oh, yeah. And we know that all these different species have evolved in one way or the other. And we 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 use uh, our, our rich fossil record uh, to show them uh, our remains of extinct fauna species, like the elephants, for example, like the gophers. We we know we I mean we have fossil remains of gophers uh, that have been recovered in different parts of Kenya. We know gonfo are, uh, uh, if you like, forefathers of, of modern day day elephants. We know we know that they had uh, four tusks, two little ones on the lower jaw, two wow. big ones on the upper jaw, and these these they became extinct. So we 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 pose the question: Why did they become extinct? What happened? And we we try we try to kind of really make them appreciate that our work entails also trying to understand why these animals became extinct. Why we have, uh, why we only have one African elephant, and and, and in the fossil record there are, there are so many elephants. We see them in the fossil yeah. record. So we use we use our, our fossil materials, our fossil remains. We got a wonderful collection in Nairobi uh, at the National Museum of Kenya. So we use all those collections to try to make them understand that evolution is not just it doesn't just refer to human evolution. It refers to oh yes, that's a wonderful uh, photo there. I can almost see the elephants that at the extreme end there. Yeah, so we use all those different faunal, faunal uh, species that have become extinct and 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 to try to encourage them to kind of really make them appreciate that evolution has happened. And we, in terms of technology, uh, we we also try to to make them appreciate that when you talk about evolution, we also we also refer to to cultural evolu evolution. We know technology. We've evolved in a big way to, in terms of our technology. Uh, from the very first time that that our, our, our early human ancestor struck that 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 stone to make that tool, yeah. we've walked a long journey. We know based on the based on the archaeological record, the earliest stone tools have been recovered uh, uh, in in the Turkana Basin. They date to around 3.3 million years ago, and and the journey, the journey to where we are right now in terms of oh. the Technology began then. The laptops that we are using, the mobile phones that we are using, that journey began around three million years ago when that human element ancestor struck that that core to extract the flake that they they they, they used at that early, that early part of human evolution or ancestry. Yeah, so we use all kinds of things and, and we also we also pose this question. Uh, Uh, um, there is a, a slight break in the internet at the moment. Um, we will just wait a moment um, for uh, Dr. Manthi to return. Um, it's actually a good uh, moment. If you have any questions for Dr. Manthi, um, please submit them in the chat now. We'll be continuing this conversation shortly, but um, we definitely are looking forward to uh, accepting you know, and featuring some of your questions. So get them in the chat now and um, and let me see what we can do here. Um, okay. Great. Um, we are going to uh, quickly put up a technical difficulty slide and uh, we will be right back. Thank you. <laughs>
we are working uh, to bring Frederick back. Um, we are going to be um, just showing some photos of his work while we are, are waiting for him to join us again. Okay, hold on one moment. Okay, um, we have uh, Frederick back with us. Um, um, are you are you ready to come back? Okay, hold on. Uh, get one one moment. Um, we are hold adding on. you to the stream. We okay. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Is everything okay? So, yeah, things okay. Uh, but we had some power interruption in this part of the part of the country. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but I'm using my phone right now. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. No so I, I. Yeah, I was saying. I was saying that um, that um, it's not easy teaching evolution in our schools across the country, but we we do our best to do that, uh, we, and, and we also appreciate the fact that uh, we have to respect people's people's uh, beliefs, uh, belief systems. Uh, but again, we also have to teach because because we have the records to show, we have the fossils to show, and 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 again, also also we also pose this particular question. Uh, 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 the Bible tells us that uh, God created human beings um, and also science tells us that uh, life began from a single cell uh, and we try to use those two to kind of really uh, marry uh, evolution and, and creation uh, because Yes, science says that we began or life began from a single cell, but it doesn't tell us where the single cell be, uh, where the where the single cell came from. Yeah, so we we do our best to kind of really try to to marry the two, uh, and uh, again also the Bible tells us that in 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 God in God, uh, that one day could be a thousand in in one day could be a thousand days. So all 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 these are different different different. Uh, means that we use to kind of really make our students appreciate that our uh, evolution is there and we are not against uh, uh, the theory of creation or, the, or, or God uh, because we believe that there, there must be some divine power somewhere and where science can't explain maybe that's where the divine power comes in. Uh, again also in terms of technology uh, we also we also try to to encourage the students appreciate that our uh, Yes, uh, the the religious religious leaders may be against uh, 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 
the concept of evolution, but we see the same leaders going to the same to the to top hospitals because they are they are top doctors in those top hospitals. So how can they uh, refuse to or, 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 or be adamant in trying in, in 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 appreciating science? And at the same time, when they get sick, they go to the top hospitals where we have the best scientists. So all these are different really explanations that we use all the time in our attempts to kind of really uh, enable our, our young learners, especially appreciate the fact that evolution has taken place and we see it all the time. And, and also science is there and science uh, relies on, on testable evidence, uh, but religion, they, we can't test religion but we can test science in even a lab. We can, take, we can test scientific um, our, our methods. We can test scientific uh, hypotheses in a lab, but we cannot test, test religion or faith in the lab. Very true. Um, we are getting a bunch of questions. I, I want to ask you one last question before we get to our, view, our viewer questions. Um, uh, you've worked on some amazing projects and we could fill up several episodes of Lunch Break Science discussing them all. Do you have a project which you are most proud of? Um, one project um, that, I'm, that I'm extremely really proud of uh, is uh, my work in, at Kanapoi. Kanapoi is a, is a site uh, to the southwest of Lake Turkana in Northern Kenya. Uh, this site dates to around 4.2 millions ago. This is the site that I worked for my PhD and my PhD uh, uh, focused or attempted uh, to reconstruct the kind of environments in which uh, members of the, 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 the earliest members of the genus Australopithecus, that Australopithecus and Menzies uh, uh, have lived. And, and this is one particular site that I'm so proud of. Uh, because we did some wonderful, I did some wonderful work, and years after my PhD, I returned there um, uh, by myself alone for for a few years, and some some years thereafter, I I I, I worked, I I got two of my colleagues joined me, uh, Professor Carl Ward uh, uh, from the University of Missouri, and also Professor Mike Pavican. They joined me from 2012, and, and we did some wonderful work, made some wonderful discoveries, and, and out of those, those particular forces, we were able to make a really, really key scientific condition uh, uh, and, and, and try to, to, to reconstruct the ancient environments, try to, to reconstruct the environments in which Australopithecus and Amenses lived, and we used all the different faunos, fauna materials from the can, from the from the from the rhinos to the bovids to the elephants to the amphibians to the reptiles, so it was a really really a very inclusive study, and we used all, all those different uh, fauna material to understand or to reconstruct the kind of environments in which Australopithecus and Amenzis lived. So I'm I'm pretty I'm very much proud of that particular project, and we are hoping very soon that we return back to Kanapoi. Uh, because we took a break from 2015 just to allow the site um, kind of really uh, erosion to take place uh, because obviously we worked there for quite some time and we, we now believe that uh, going back there again very soon, we should be able to recover more, more fossil materials. So the kind of point to me is very dear and I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's, it's a site that's very dear to a lot of us uh, in the scientific world. Um we have a, a question from your colleague and um, past Lunch Break Science guest, Ashley Hammond. Um, let's, yeah, let's bring that one up. Um, any plans for more exploration in parts of Kenya outside of the Turkana Basin? Um, what about Baringo or other fossil spots in the Kenyan Rift Valley? Yeah, definitely there is a great need, and I'm sorry I'm speaking in, in, in darkness. We, I, I, I haven't been able to work, work up to work on, on the power supply. Uh, Again, uh, this is not just how Kenya is. I'm sorry. Oh. But, uh, there's a big rain right now. As I talk, big downpour in Kisumu, and Ashley knows where Kisumu is. A big downpour is a, is a city along Lake Victoria, uh, and it, it, it's a big blackout right now as we speak. Yeah, so excuse me for that. Um, uh, so, yes, there's a big need for, for us to 
and for of us, not just Kenyans, but, but, but even our colleagues from North America and elsewhere, for us to explore other sites across Kenya. And a, a lot of the attention has really uh, uh, be, been turned on to the Chukana Basin, where, where there's been wonderful discoveries. Uh, but I, I believe that other sites, that, that, that other areas that have not been worked uh, for quite some time, there's, there's need for us to go back to those sites. And, and I know Ashley and I have begun some work uh, at Lemudongo, which is, which is um, to the kind of southeast of Nar southwest of Nairobi, and we worked there a few years ago. And and and, but thanks to COVID, uh, we stopped our work there. We were supposed to go there last year, and and hopefully we will do some work there this year. Yeah, so this this is a great need for for more explorations in different uh, sites across Kenya. Uh, the Barigo Basin uh, needs a, a, a much much more surveys, much 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 many more surveys. Uh, other areas also also to to the eastern, southeastern end of Lake Chokana. Uh, I think those areas also need uh, deserve some surveys. And even some of the sites that were worked, worked many years ago and that, that have not been worked for quite some time, there's a great need for, for us to kind of uh, begin working on those particular sites. And, and we need to go into our records, go into uh, the literature that we have of different sites across the country and begin to, to return to the sites that were worked like maybe in the in the 70s and nobody has worked there for a very long time. We need to really, really uh, expand our work into those sites and even look for new sites because I believe there are lots of other new sites out there that we've not recovered. And 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 some of the some of the time periods are very critical. We know the time period between between maybe six to six to nine million years ago. That's a critical time period. Um in um, in trying to understand about, about the ancestry of our own species. And even our other human ancestors, we know we don't have many sites that date that that time period. So there's need for us to to survey for more sites across the country, especially sites that would help up, would help us fill some gaps that we have in the fossil record. Um, that is really exciting. Uh, I, I I I I hope that we'll get to hear more about that. Um, we did post um a link to Ashley Hammond's episode of Lunch Break Science in the chat. Our next question comes from Alice Corning. Um, and she asks, uh, to what degree are the environmental and scientific communities collaborating in Kenya? Can you come again? Um, to what degree are the environmental and scientific communities collaborating in Kenya? Uh, I, I believe... Um... Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm, like I said, I'm using my phone and it's not quite clear. I'm sorry about that. So I, I, I believe that uh, uh, the question is uh, to what degree are the environmental and scientific communities coming in Kenya? Uh, does that refer to us or, or those of us who are working uh, in, this, in this particular discipline or what? Is that true? Yeah, but I, kind of between like environmentalism and, and, um, and like paleoanthropology, um, is, is there a lot of, um, of kind of holistic work together between disciplines? Oh yeah, yeah. We, you know, I mean, for us to understand to understand the environments we see in our times, uh, we, 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 we also have to dig into the past. But we also use modern environments to infer into, into the past. Like for example, uh, in the fossil record, uh, if we find uh, some fossil elephants, for example, uh, uh, in, 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 I mean, like that, that they say to around a million years ago. And we know that we are talking about, um, uh, uh, yeah, that's a nice one. That's a, that's a fossil elephant. We know that's elephant, uh, elephant uh, lenses from, from the Kibish formation in, in Chukana. So for us to, to, to infer or to try to understand the kind of environment in which that particular elephant lived, we, have, we, also, we also have to look into the environment in which elephants live in our times. So we use the, the present day in knowledge about different fauna species to infer into the past based on the fossil materials that have come from different, different fossil sites across the country. So you can, you can, you can, you must understand the, 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 the different environments in which different fauna species live. And, and, and we assume that the, the, the fossil counterparts 
would have lived in fairly similar environments. So we can't, we, you cannot be false understanding modern environments if you are seeking to understand ancient environments. Um, this will be our last call for questions uh, uh, for Frederick. So um, if you have a question, get it in right now. Um, our next question comes from H. Let's see here. Um, uh, how has the pandemic affected your research and uh, museum related activities? That's a very good question. Um, indeed, like, 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 like everywhere across the, the world, the pandemic uh, has had a big impact on our, on our research. Uh, uh, we, know, we know that uh, like last year or even the year before last, uh, there was hardly any, any, any field research uh, uh, undertaken you know, not just Kenya, but, but across, across the African continent, we know a lot of projects can cancel their, their field sessions uh, because of the travel advisories and, and, and also that all the fears that came around, uh, around uh, about as a result of the pandemic. Airlines also canceling flights all over, the world, all, over, all over the world, not being able to travel from point, point A to point B. So in a big way, the pandemic has hit research uh, things are beginning to, to show up right now, um, and we do believe that uh, going forward, maybe from this year, there's going to be more more field uh, expeditions across the country. Uh, I, I managed it last year uh, to do to do field work twice, but it wasn't easy. We had I had to convince even even my employer, the National Museums of Kenya, that I would, I would take care of myself and I would take care of my crew. And, uh, and, and after doing that, they allowed me to, to travel to Japan for field work. Uh, so yes, uh, the pandemic has really affected research in a big way, uh, but now things are beginning to, to kind of really brighten up. In terms of our museums, uh, uh, in terms of uh, revenue, our museum rely in a way upon, upon some of the funds that, that come from our researchers. Uh, and, and that fund, those funds have not been forthcoming in the last few years uh, because our researchers, especially from North America and elsewhere, have not been able to travel to Kenya. So museums and institutions across 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 the country and across the African continent have been really hit very hard by the pandemic. But things are beginning now to kind of really show up and bring them up, and we do hope that from from this summer going forward, we are going to see more more research and more people come into our museums and even more people go to the field work. Uh, to do research. I'm, I'm going to ask you one last question, which is, um, do you have any advice for those who are watching who are interested in pursuing a career in science? My, my advice to, especially, especially the potentials, um, I mean, those who are interested, especially the young ones who are interested in pursuing careers in prehistory. Uh, I would like to say that uh, there are wonderful careers in prehistory. Uh, we are always we are always eager to know about our ancestry. We are always eager to, to know about how we've come into being, the journey that we've walked over the years. We are always eager to know about about the the ancestry and how all the different uh, fauna species that we see all the time, the journey they've walked from the very earlier times into the present. So it's a very interesting topic, and and we are all curious to know really about, about where we come from. And, and, and to me, I think we need to have more, more players in this. And especially in Africa, especially in Africa, I'd like to really underline that, uh, that we all need to work together to really, really help grow many, many more scholars in the African continent. Uh, and and if, if we can really achieve that, I think we'll have done a lot of justice to, to the African continent and Africa is, is never short of fossils. We have tons and tons of yeah. fossils from across the continent. Yeah, so we, we need to really have more African scholars, more younger, younger, young, younger African scholars taking up careers in prehistory and, and, and also playing a big role in conserving those, 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 uh, those remains, uh, those records, the, even the sites from where the fossils come from, the sites from, uh, from where all these different fauna materials come from. We all have a role to play in ensuring that we will protect those sites for posterity. So I would like to really encourage all of us and even the younger people who are working 
uh, me tonight or watching us tonight that that they are wonderful careers in the prehistory. I love prehistory myself. I'm really passionate about it. Um, I love talking about it all the time and, 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 and talking to young Kenyans across, uh, across the country and, and, and encouraging them to take up careers in prehistory. Well, we will um, we will be sharing um, uh, all the links from this episode, and we'll also uh, share some links to uh, other Leaky Foundation grants other than the Baldwin grant that would be very applicable as well. Um, and again, if you are interested in helping the Leaky Foundation fund more researchers, um, uh, we are raising money for our Baldwin program right now. So we'll we'll reshare that link as well. Frederick, thank you so much, and thank you for for for. <laughs> Being able to even tune in uh, during a blackout shows that science can't be stopped. Um, yeah, um, it's been very nice talking to all of you. Uh, again, I'm so sorry about that. It's raining so hard out there, and and, uh, and this has really affected uh, power supply across across Kifuno City. Uh, I'm so sorry. It, it wasn't pre-planned, uh, believe me. Oh no! <laughs> uh, but I, I think we've done pretty well in, in the midst of that challenge. And I look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Johnson, for hosting me. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. And, and again, also, I'd like to encourage all of us to to support the Leaky Foundation and even raising funds to support more African scholars. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank um, you. So Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, Bye. 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 Okay, so... Um, Next time on Lunch Break Science, we'll meet Leakey Foundation Baldwin Fellowship Scholar Mercy Akinyi and learn about uh, what studying disease and wild baboons tells us about how disease starts, progresses, and transmits to others. It's going to be a, I'm, I'm really, really excited about this episode, um, I, as I am pretty much about all of our episodes. But thank you all for taking a break from your day and feeding your brain with the Leakey Foundation. Until next time. Stay hungry for knowledge. Lunch Break Science is brought to you by the Leakey Foundation and is made possible by the generous support of the Ann and Gordon Getty Foundation and Camilla and George Smith. Visit us at leakeyfoundation.org to learn more about the Leakey Foundation, today's guest scientist, and how you can help support human evolution research and educational programs like Lunch Break Science. Right now, all donations will be matched by generous donors, meaning your impact will be doubled. Miss an episode of Lunch Break Science? Catch up on past episodes and browse our library of Leaky Foundation lectures on our YouTube channel. Still hungry for science and can't wait till our next episode? Check out the Leaky Foundation's award-winning podcast, Origin Stories, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to the Leaky Foundation's YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or sign up for our newsletter to be the first to hear about exciting upcoming episodes and programs, as well as groundbreaking discoveries in human evolution research.